a very controversial issue among good Christians is that of free will. Are we really free? Very important, very vital. If we're not free, what virtue is there in anything good we do? I want to read you from Exodus chapter 20 from the Ten Commandments. It uses a word we don't like, jealous, but it's a love word. Please notice what it says. In Exodus chapter 20, the second commandment, the Lord your God is a jealous God, a loving God, punishing the children for the sins of the fathers, the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to thousands who love me and keep my commandments. Our Lord Jesus quoted from this text. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So God anticipates that though we are born in sin, with will inclined to evil, as his spirit moves upon us, we become free to do the right thing, to love him and keep his commandments. In the last passage of Matthew 16, Christ says when he comes back, he'll reward everyone according to their works. Revelation 20 says the dead are judged according to their works. So the New Testament, like the Old, offers rewards and punishments. Rewards for obeying God. Punishments for disobeying God. These rewards and punishments show clearly that we are free under the moving of God's Spirit to choose the good and refuse the evil. Remember, Luke 7.20 says the Pharisees rejected the counsel of God. So we are free to reject. The end of Matthew 23 how often would I have gathered you as a hen, her chicken, but you would not. So we're free to accept the gathering or we're free to reject it. And then in Matthew 25, a great passage on the last judgment. And Jesus is the last great judge because he's experienced our life, our trials and our sorrows. And he makes everlasting life depend not on knowing theology, important though that is, but have we fed the hungry? Have we clothed the naked? Have we visited the prisoners? Have we ministered to the sick? And Jesus says, inasmuch as you've done it unto one of the least of these, you've done it unto me. The way I treat any person is the way I am treating Jesus according to Matthew 25. But that means I'm responsible. Now I'm not free on my own. I only become free as the Holy Spirit moves upon my heart. Then I have an opportunity to choose a right. Do you know these words from the end of the Bible? The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come. Whoever's thirsty, let him come and take the water of life freely. There's the gospel summed up. God invites us to come. Will you come today, my friends? Under the moving of the Spirit, as you listen to the gospel, you are free. God help you to come and drink the water of life. God bless you.